Howdy! I want to show you guys a workflow that we have in the Altair portfolio for when you have combinations of model and result files, so FIM and H3D, and you have hundreds or thousands of these combinations, and you want to post-process their data to CSV format in a speedy manner. Normally, if you're going to do this kind of post-processing in something like Hyperview, you would have to go through each of these combinations one by one, um, but in this workflow, we should be able to do it a little bit faster. What we're going to do is we're going to do HyperStudy as a wrapper for the results query workflow on HyperMesh. Now, if you've used HyperMesh before, you might have gone to the Post tab and gone to Tools and made a results query operation. And it would look something like this, where you say, I want to query these things. You click Set. You specify an output file location. And then you click Save. This is going to generate an XML and a TCL file that looks something like this. So this operation that we're going to do in HyperStudy is going to take these XML and TCL files, and it's going to submit the TCL file in batch mode of HyperMesh. Um, and if you have the parallel processing power in your computer, um, you can submit multiple TCL runs at a time. Um, and so that's where we get our speed. So what I've done is I've taken this TCL and XML files, and I've modified them very slightly um, to my needs, to my file locations. Uh, for example, I've modeled the FE input line here to point to my file that I'm going to reference, modified the H3D file accordingly, and I will have also modified the location for this XML file. Um, that's all I've changed in the TCL file. In the XML file, the H3D location gets modified. You might change load cases if you want all of them with this text. Um, you might change the numeric precision here if you have small numbers and you'd probably change the output file for the CSV location. But apart from that, I haven't really modified these TCL and XML files. Um, what they do is the TCL says, hey, look at this FIM file, look at this H3D file, um, and look at this XML query, and then run batch mode um, to do this XML data set query um, on your HyperMesh file. So that's how we get results data. Now, let's take a look at the steps you'll take in order to automate this results querying. First things first, file structure. The way I've organized is I have my TCL and XML files at the start of my directory. I have a CSV output folder, which is where I'm going to generate my CSV results into. I have an HM files directory where I've stored my model and results files, those being FIM and H3D. And lastly, I have this very important var matrix.csv. Let's take a look at what this is. This file is the lookup table that guides the results query process. In the first column, we have the run or query number, and each row represents a different query. Second column is for the H3D file name. This is the results file. Um, this last column is the FIM file, so our model file. And in between, we have the CSV file, which is, of course, the name of the file that will be outputted by our results query process. Let's get into the bread and butter of things. I'm going to make a new study inside HyperStudy. I'll title mine Results Query Study. The location of this is important. I'm going to put it in my super top secret location right here. And I'll press OK. And then we'll start to define a model. Now, importantly, I'm going to use a lookup table model for my lookup table spreadsheet. I may point to that spreadsheet right here. And that's about all we need to do. Then I'll import the variables and specify the number of input variables from the lookup table. I only have one variable, and it corresponds to the run column. So I'll have a different number for each results query. Then I can go to review that input variable, where I can see that I have the run variable there, and its values are 1 through 4. If you have more queries in your submission, you should see more numbers here. Then I have output responses from the lookup table. Those are H3D, CSV, and FIM. I will eventually use these variables to link them to the input variables for my XML and TCL files. Those are going to drive those XML and TCL files. Now let me add a new model, a parameterized file model, to modify the XML file automatically. Let me point to that file right now. Yes, I want to parameterize this. First, I'll parameterize the H3D file name as a variable. I'll right-click on it, create parameter give it a reasonable name like XML H3D, and now I need to change the format to just percent %s, and then press OK. Then I can go down to the CSV input, make it a variable, give it a good name, and change the format again to percent %s. 
press OK. And this concludes the parameterization of our file. Um, now we need to change the input file extension to .xml to keep it consistent. And then we can import the variables into the define input variables section. Notice how they are yellow when they come in, but once we link them up, they'll be fine. We can link these variables up by clicking on the three dots here, and we'll see our existing output responses. And this makes sense. We're just putting the h3d variables to our h3d output response, the csv variable to our csv output response. And you can either use the insert var name button here, or you can just type the var names in manually. Now I'm going to write, execute, and extract that lookup table to make sure I get responses for it. And then I can write and just execute the XML file. If I click show in Explorer, I will see the outcomes of these tests. Just to make sure that things are working, we can review the XML file that we have output right here. And what I'm looking for is that the things that I've modified like the H3D and the CSV are looking good, um, like there's no typos or anything. Now I can go back to define my TCL parameterized file model. I'll name it accordingly. Here I'm going to point to my TCL file, not the XML. Parameterize it. This time we're parameterizing the FEM, H3D, and XML. So this should be par for the course. TCL FEM is the file name of our FEM variable. Percent %s is the format. Same thing for the H3D. It gets its own parameter name. Now, the novel thing about XML as we get into it is that we're copying the entire file path. Then we'll right click on it and do create parameter and give it an appropriate name and format. Press OK. Should be good to go. Now I change the solver execution script to HMBatch. Remember, we're running this TCL in HMBatch. Change the solver input file extension to TCL. And then I'll modify the solver input arguments to be specific to my TCL run. So I got no command, TCL, and then I'll be submitting the file path to the HMBatch solver as well. I'll click import, and we should see three additional variables for each of our parameters. They come in yellow, but that's okay, because we're going to change the links right here. Um, the H3D points to R1, the FEM points to R3 per my lookup table. You could review them from your file. I actually forgot to make the variable that we're gonna link the TCL XML variable to. So let's name it ds underscore one for now. And trust me, that'll work once we actually make our data source. What I need to do is go to define output responses, and then I can drag in the XML file um, from our model to submission. Uh, the location of that is important. Here, we'll change the tool to templex and we'll set the data type to string. We're going to enter H-S-T-U-R-I and then parentheses. And this gets us the full file path of our XML file. Um, and it gives us the variable name DS1. So that's what's going on here. Our TCL X underscore XML variable needs the full file path of our XML file that we are modifying every iteration of HyperStudy. Then I'm going to modify the sequences of the models to make sure nothing gets tripped up. The XML is going to have to run after the lookup model. And then the TCL file is going to run after, it's gonna run after the XML file. And it also gets another condition. It gets ignore dependencies. And that's just to make sure that HyperStudy is okay with it running on its own. It doesn't have any output responses as far as HyperStudy knows, um, but that's fine. And so ignore dependencies, make sure that TCL file will run once we get up to automated submission. Then I will make sure everything works. First, I'll go to define output responses and make sure that each of those variables have an extracted response. If they don't, you could go and you could re-execute and extract the lookup table model. Then I'm going to write and execute the TCL file. What I'm looking for here is that it takes a little bit to run. Um, I will look in the Explorer to make sure that I have a TCL file here and the model three folder. I'll look at that, make sure there's no typos in that. Um, if you're noticing that things aren't running, you can just copy and paste this entire TCL text into the TCL window of HyperMesh to make sure it runs. And then I'm also going into the directory where I am outputting my CSV files. I will see the CSV file that has been made here. And that means I am good to go with this results query. I know that it works as far as HyperView is concerned. Then I will right click to make a basic HyperStudy submission, a basic HyperStudy run use the definition from the setup, and then all the models, variables, output responses should automatically be defined. 
I'll use the sweep specification and I'll change the number of runs to equal my number of runs, which happens to be four, and I'll also click apply. Then I think I'm good to go to, to submit it. If I click evaluate tasks, we should see this table start to uh, format as it submits. You can also go to multi-execution and change it to a higher number. And if that is of course where the great speed comes in our hyper study runs. You can bump that multi-execution number up and it will end up using more Altair units, but they get discounted the more and more you use. Uh, it's also super fast to run in multi-execution. Lastly, I can go to my output directory and see that I have new CSV files for each of my results query runs. I hope this helps you guys. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment or email us at hwsupport at altair.com.